I'm like going, yeah, sing it to the next generation. Amen? And uh, you know, one of the things that the Lord showed me a long time ago, if you want to have friends all your life, continue making friends across generational lines. Because if you just make friends in your own generation, they'll leave you and go to heaven. Okay? But if you make friends across generations, you'll always have friends to go to heaven with. Amen? Amen. This evening we want to give you an opportunity. I can tell you our speakers that have come this week, um, that none of them said, hey, we got to have a certain amount or we won't come. And our speakers that are here to, today and tomorrow night and Tuesday night, they drove all the way from Joplin, Missouri. Wow. And uh, I appreciate them coming. And uh, they didn't come for an offering. They came to give. Uh, a, a word to us that I believe is going to be life giving. And this morning, I, I don't know about you, but I was richly blessed. And the God uh, really just touched my heart through that. But I want to give you an opportunity each evening to give and to be a part of the of the camp meeting when it comes to that that side of it. Um, you can uh, text to give eight one zero two zero two zero six zero five, and um, I think there's a section in there for. Special speaker, maybe? Is there? Do any of my deacons know? They're going to look it up. And uh, if not, you can also use an offering envelope and you just mark it for special speaker and we'll make sure that um, it goes into that fund so that we can take care of the needs that, that they have because we're very thankful um, for them being here. And uh, so we just thank you for that opportunity and thank you for your gifts this evening. And so... If you need an envelope, raise your hand if you don't have one. And uh, many of you probably already do. If you don't have an envelope, we want you to be able to have one so that we can uh, give you credit for that giving. On the, on the uh, 810, you can put a special speaker? Yeah. All right. So on the text to give, you can, you can put it in there for a special speaker. That way we know uh, what it's for. And uh, we thank you so very, very much uh, for your faithfulness. Uh, I, I, I was told one time a number of years ago that how long you take an offering probably depends on um, how much you think it's um, worth. And so they said, give people plenty of time to get ready to give. But the thing about it is, is I've just never been one much for that, and I don't have an emotional appeal for you. I just know that when you give, God will give back to you. I also know that when you sow into good ground, there's a reaping that comes. And you can expect it. And one of the things that the Bible Center has been enjoying um, in recent times is we've been enjoying especially the reaping of seed sown for many, many years. Amen? We're so thankful for that. You can expect the harvest and it will come. Lord, we thank you for your, the opportunity to worship in our giving. And we pray and bless everyone that gives tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. The ushers are going to serve you. The folks are going to lead us in, in some more worship. I don't know about you, but I'm getting ready, ready, ready to hear the word of God tonight. Amen? amen. amen.
name. It is intimate with us before as anything else. Your name, Jesus. What a beautiful name it is. Jesus, we love you. We honor you. Your name is exalted in this place, God. Thank you, Jesus. It's our desire to make space for you in our hearts, in our lives, in the time frames that uh, sometimes we get so caught up in. It's 
our desire this week to really make space for you. And I ask you to come and fill that time, that space. So that you'll know through the week, um, you know, a couple of things that will be happening. One is, uh, we have a number of different churches in our community that are going to be joining with us on different nights. Tomorrow night, uh, Living Light will be with us and their worship team. And um, on Wednesday night, Lifehouse will, I'm sorry, on Wednesday night, Living Word will be with us from Manton and their team. On Thursday night, Lifehouse uh, Assembly will be with us and their team. Friday night, Bay Valley Christian, uh, coming all the way from Bay City, is going to be with us. And then on Saturday night, Cornerstone and uh, is going to be with us right here from Cadillac and uh, Pastor Troy Baxter and their crew. So in other words, every night, there's going to be somebody that's going to be coming and joining with us. And, um, and uh, because this is not a revival center thing, this is a freedom thing. Yes. And uh, God is bringing freedom to the people of this community and this territory. Yes, Lord. And we thank you for being here. I am so glad that you're here tonight. Yes. And uh, so glad that you came. You took the time. You invested. And uh, watch what God is going to do in and through you and especially through this week. Try if you can to be one of those at the end of the week who said, I was there. For every bit of it. I didn't miss any of it. I caught all of it. And uh, if you can do that, please do that. And uh, you won't regret it. I can say that. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to uh, just to welcome um, my friend Dan Wormuth to come. Um, you've met him before because they were here. Dan and Cindy were here in November for the Prophets in the House Conference. They were here this morning. Um, here's what I can tell you. And that is this. In all the time that I've known them, the only change that I've seen in them is that they continue to grow in the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. That's what I see. Yes. They just continue to grow in the Lord. And what a wonderful thing that is. And what a wonderful blessing that we are to sit under this ministry. And so, if you can, would you just uh, welcome them? Oh, I, I, wait a minute. I've got one more thing to say because I can't say it later. Um... Down below, in there's there's going to be a concession every night at six o'clock if you want chips and cotton candy. Someone told me they were going to buy every kid cotton candy so that their parents could. I don't even know what that means. Okay, but, um, there's going to be all kinds of stuff down there. And uh, where, where is it? Is that is that up by the trailers? Yeah. Okay, it's up by the trailers. And then uh, also, Bray has some bracelets. And uh, things, uh, keychains that he has made, and he said everything that he is making from those, he's, he wants to put into um, our rebuild. Um, so uh, we thank Ray for that, and he's back there. He's got some really cool stuff, and if you want something like that, he'll be glad to have it. So if you will, welcome my friend Dan and Cindy, if you come too. All right. He's first. Didn't even need to say anything, you know. But here's what you, here's what you can know too: is tomorrow night she will be ministering the word, and uh, it's uh, I mean, every night we get something good from her. But she will be ministering the word tomorrow night. Thank you, thank you for receiving me. You know, I just wanted to say I wasn't really planning on speaking, but when we were talking about the name of Jesus, I just felt like that the Holy Spirit said, uh, He said, don't don't minimize that name. When trying to get free. Don't minimize that name when you're trying to help somebody else get free. Yes. When you're trying to listen to somebody else, don't minimize the name of Jesus. All of heaven invested in that name. Yes. And he said there is no other name Amen. by which man can be saved. Yes. 
And the, well, a lot of times we get caught up in people's troubles and we get caught up in, you know, the things that are going on. And sometimes, you know, people will come to me with things that I'm just like, oh, well, yeah, I don't know how to help you. Sorry about that. Yeah, I don't know what to say to that. You know, and sometimes people's burdens and people's things that they go through, or sometimes even ones that we're going through, when you just feel like it was, it, you just wish it was all over. You just, you wish trials were all over. You just wish hope would come. You just wish Jesus would come. How many of you felt like that one? I just wish Jesus would come, you know. But there is hope, and there is, there is hope in that name. There's authority in that name. There's power in that name. Go back to that song and go... You know, the, the writer of that song um, wrote a thesis about the name of Jesus, and that's what she pulled out of that thesis was that song. Right. That song is a very sound, doctrinal, powerful thing because, you know, a lot of times we get, we get so caught up in the knowledge of what somebody is going through. And validating somebody asked me today, what do you do with people who have gone through stuff and... and, and, and you know, they just don't feel like that there's any hope. You know, and my first answer was you validate, validate, validate. And yes, you validate what somebody's gone through. You got, you know, last week somebody said to us, you know, we got to remember it's not about you. Right. But I want to tell you, Jesus made it all about you. All about you. It was about you. Yeah. It is about you. He didn't love you enough that he gave his son for you. And he so loved you that it's out of that love that we give love to other people. You know, somebody used to say, well, God wants to just use you up. He wants to use you up. And I used to, I'm like, oh, yeah, he just wants to use me. Go ahead, Jesus, use me up. You know, it's kind of like saying, go ahead and abuse me. Go ahead and, you know, listen, it's not what God wants. God doesn't want to use you up. He wants to fill you up. He wants to fill you up. And it's not until you're filled up that you can give out. You can give out of your flesh if you want, but then you're going to end up really, really resenting, regretting some of the decisions you try to make out of giving out of your own flesh. It's out of being filled with God. I let God fill me. Dan lets God fill him with his love. And it's out of that love that we get filled that we can love one another. And then out of that love, we can love our children. And out of that love, the children can nurture the church, nurture the body, nurture the city. It is very generational, but it's all about the name of Jesus. It's all about that name. Validate, give knowledge, pray with them, but don't let anybody's addiction ever intimidate. Come on, son. Don't let anybody's addiction ever intimidate you into thinking that his name is not more powerful. Right. Well, you just don't know what I've been through. I know the name of Jesus. I know the name. And I know that it has come to set men free. We need to get, you know, one-on-one -on -one freedom. Know that there is power in the precious name of Jesus. For you and for other people. But for you, if you're a person who says why, never let your why resolve in unbelief. Never let your yes. why. You know, people say, well, I don't know. God's got big shoulders. I used to say that. God's got big shoulders. He can take me, you know, just fussing with him and get mad at him. I just let him know I'm mad. Okay, only until the sun goes down. Because the Bible says, don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. Yes. Amen? You better resolve that anger with God. Yeah. Yeah. And just remember, sometimes I go, okay, God, you are God and I am not. It is you who have made us and not we ourselves. Yes. We are the sheep of your pasture, as the scripture says. Amen. So anyway, okay, there was one more little bit that I wanted to just, when you guys were singing about the powerful name of Jesus, a backslider's heart will always judge God for what he didn't do. We need to be careful. We need to go back to that name. Amen. I don't want to reevaluate God just because I experience loss. 
We don't reevaluate God because we're disappointed. We just buried two men last week. In one day, we had two funerals, and it was one gentleman who had several strokes. I don't remember all of his, he had a lot, he had a brain tumor, so he couldn't talk well, he couldn't walk well, he had one arm, but he was the hardest worker in our church. Yes, he was. And whenever he would do, he would go to the nursing homes and pray for people to be healed. As, as disabled as he was, he always went out of his way. He would go to Sam's and load his van up with one arm, limping, to fill the van up for the coffee shop to have supplies. And you don't think that was hard walking by him on your way to a meeting? You wanted to help him. But he, he would say, Pastor Cindy, this is my calling. This is my calling. He didn't allow his loss of an arm, his loss of his ability to speak. He didn't even allow that to stop him from doing what God called him to do. There is nothing that can stop you except you. Amen. Don't let your excuses stop you from doing, as, as valid as they may be, as great as the loss, there is still power. There is a power that is higher than the loss you experience. There is a power that is more powerful than the addiction that has bound people. Yes. There's more power in the name of Jesus that holds a spirit captive, yes. that feels like they can't get up and do anything. God knows how to walk through those prison bars, and he knows yes, how to, even if you don't have the energy to get up and meet him, he can pick you up and breathe into your life. Yes. Breathe into your lungs, breathe into your spirit, and then bring yes. you back to life. Isn't he a good God? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Father, we just thank you for the word that is coming forth. We thank you that your word is so powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces asunder. It divides the soul from the spirit. We are so intertwined, God, that it takes your word to di rightly divide who we are so that we can see, so that we can hear. So give us ears to hear. Give us eyes to see. Give us a heart that is receptive to your anointed word in Jesus' name. Jesus, amen. That's good word already. Part one of freedom, night two, well, no, first night, I guess. We had this morning and we have tonight. So I'm a shepherd, I'm a pastor, and I think in those terms, of all the other anointings and giftings, I serve in many different ways. I'm a chaplain for local police department, and that's been some challenging moments to see um, life at its worst, and to stand there and be there with officers trying to make sure people's lives have ministry. You know what shocks me most about that is that how many people don't go to church and so they don't have a pastor or a preacher or anyone to call them. That just absolutely dumbfounds me. How often we get called because they have absolutely nobody. Everybody needs a home church and a shepherd, a pastor. This side's louder than you, so they're going to get the blessing in a second. Everybody needs a home church and everybody needs a pastor. Amen. And when you meet people who say, I don't need to go to church, shake your head. And just go, you are so fed up with a dumb head. That's a Michigan term. You knew that, right? So anyway, everybody is a pastor in church. And so um, I just talked this morning about being here on this hill and what God is doing in your lives. And so I would you just take a deep breath with me for a minute? Let's breathe in the presence of the Lord. Just breathe in. Thank you, Lord. So good. And breathe out. The name Yahweh. Sometimes you hear people say Yahweh, but it's actually Yahweh. Yahweh. To say Yahweh is actually a Yah out wah, in. Out in. Yah. It's to breathe in the very breath of God. Adam in the garden is an inanimate object formed meticulously, gloriously, but without life. And Yahweh, God breathed into him 
life and the DNA of God filled him and he became a living soul. And every time you and I breathe air, we are actually that close to his name, Yahuwah, the name of God every time you breathe. That's why the words coming out of our mouth are breathing a blessing in the name of the Lord or something else. <laughs> and I don't know about you, but I'm done with the halitosis of people's arms. Are you done with that? Just, or the devil. I, I just really want, I, I want the breath of God. Um, Pastor um, Pat reached out to Joe, uh, and she didn't even know that Joe and I were already talking. My brother Joe is um, a keyboardist for us and a psalmist and a musician, and we have been preparing to do another uh, uh, project. This is his first one. And um, she had reached out to him for some specific types of music. And what was so exciting is I'd already told Joe I wanted to do that very thing. So for him, it was confirmation. So he'll go into the studio really soon here and fulfill your request. You'll get the first copies uh, of that. And so we're producing that shortly. But this is his first one. And it's called The Journey. Uh, and The Journey is... It's got high hopes out of the woods, in the garden. I, I just let it play while I'm studying because there's no words to it. So it doesn't distract me. I'm a worshiper. And when I'm studying, the worship takes me aside. Yes. So anyway, um, Christina, I want to give you this one for you, sister. Because of all your hard work trying to make sure we had notes for tonight, I bless you. Now, what I don't know is if you even still have a CD player because... <laughs> We're now doing thumb drives and just, you know, uh, what is that, iTunes and stuff like that, yeah. Um, it is on iTunes. Um, and there's a bag here, there's 38, uh, there's 37 left. So this is Joe and I. Joe and I want to sew these uh, into what you're doing for rebuilding. So if someone wants to buy one for $10, then that'll go towards whatever you determine is best for this project going forward. So it's not bound to building. Building it's connected to what you need to do to advance the vision. Thank the Lord. We'll release them for ten dollars, uh, and then Debbie, because you came all the way from Missouri by way of Traverse City, I want to give you that because I don't think you have one. So give that to you. Um, just the glory of the Lord. So I was talking to you about um, just his, you know, his his word this morning for us as just believers and sons and daughters of the Lord. Your, your pastors have been not just friends to Cindy and I, they've been mentors to us. I think I told you in November the story about how my grandfather was 10 days from dying of cancer. He lived his entire life without Christ. And Pastor Pat went and evangelized him there in that room. And he came to Christ and the family could rejoice that he would be with us for eternity. And it wasn't a nice little, you know, today might be a good day for you to get saved. I mean, she went after, she had to go after Paul Thompson's heart. That old army cussed head of a, uh, of a Thompson. So uh, I do come from a line of honoriness. So uh, on both sides, I think. But the, I just say thank you once again for that because of what the promise was in that. And I realized is that Freedom Camp in many ways is about us saying, Lord, how might I evangelize the unbelieving part of someone's heart today. And that might be a believer's unbelieving heart, or it might be an unbeliever's unbelieving heart. This morning we looked at our golden text. If you remember, it was where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Another word there is liberty. We saw that in the Amplified. And so we took a look at the tree of life. And you got a whole lot in very little time about Tree of Life. And I'm sure you were thinking that was a really long message, Pastor Dan. But we looked at the Tree of Life. And then we understood that the Tree of Life restores innocence in our life. And that innocence becomes a conduit of God's power. And that innocence results in freedom, not only for me, but for others who are going to walk yes. in truth. Yes. And so you really have the right to be restored to, to innocence. I heard the Holy Spirit say that the trauma and the crisis of your yesterday will not stop him from breaking forth and renewing you and bringing you innocence for the rest of your life. I'd like to announce a word from the Lord for this camp. 
that God is going to restore innocence where there has been great trauma. And the PSPD, uh, post-traumatic stress disorders, and the stressors, and the dissociative identity disorder that has happened because of the traumas and the stressors. The Lord is saying those labels that identify, and many others, that identify the actions of an individual because of the trauma, because of the pain, the Lord says he will not allow that to stop his purpose of bringing innocence again to hearts. So I say to the little girl and to the little boy who was molested, I just declare to you that you're in freedom camp and God is Thank going you, to Lord. heal you, even the compartmentalized pain. You have dealt with all of the pain in the kitchen and in the living room of your heart, but God says, I'm gonna finalize this. This is your season for you to walk in that freedom. There are times in our life when we have found measures of freedom and liberty and we're walking in that. But the Lord wants you to know you have the right to be restored to full innocence. And Pastor Dan, I, I, I won't have the innocence of not having been traumatized, but you forget what Pastor Cindy was just talking about a few moments ago and it really connects to this moment. Jesus does heal and restore innocence, the sense of wholeness and cleanness. So we're gonna talk about that. Do you remember this morning when I asked you to remember the spiritual order that the Lord created a spirit, I am a spirit, I possess a soul, I live in a body. I just remind you that so that I can go forward. And I also remind you that when you were saved, you were justified. Justified never sinned. So when he heals, he heals justified, never been hurt. Now this is what this is what is so miraculous about you and me. Fearfully and wonderfully made. I can have the memory of what was done against me, but not own or feel any longer the sin against me, the trauma against me, the wounding against me. I don't have to live with it any longer. That's right. Thank you. I can, so some people want to be free of the memory of it. But I want you to know you were made in God's likeness. God knows what the world has done. And he knows what men and women have done to each other. And he knows the atrocities. Yet his name, Jesus, that he gave his son, that by that name we might be saved, that by that name we are sotoria, we are sozo, we are completely healed total healed, spirit made alive, soul regenerated and being regenerated, body healed. You have that right. I will remind you of that because you and I sometimes uh, in our soul of cold restoration, it's just requiring some time. Aren't you glad he's not finished with you yet? He doesn't leave you in the ditch. He didn't leave me in the ditch. I threw myself in the ditch. And the, sometimes we're mad at everybody else and we think threw us in the ditch, but sometimes it's just me. I threw myself in the ditch. So when we were looking at that word about matters of the heart and blockages, and I was talking about rejection this morning, I just I want to remind you that I think one of the one of the primary focuses for this region is that there has been a deep-rooted spirit of rejection that's been a major blockage for people to find wholeness. And I want you to know you are going to discover through your times of worship together as a congregation, through the word as it's being preached. I hear the word being preached. I tune in. I listen to your worship. Shikam Moshe, I wouldn't pass it by. If I was living here, I'd be here. Are you hearing me? I the, you, you take time for the presence of the Lord. I'm saying God is here and he's moving. And he's in other congregations and houses of worship in the area too. But he's here. And so we know that there's a reason and purpose for that. And I, I know that God wants to remove that spirit of rejection and remove the bitterness. So when we looked at that, remember the last thing we talked about today is inviting Holy Spirit to show me, to change me, to fill me. Do you remember that? Can we just say that one more time? Lord, show me, 
Change me, fill me. Okay, thank you for giving the Holy Spirit permission. So the tree of knowledge of good and evil will always produce shame and victimization. The tree of life produces healing, peace, and such. The results of shame are a cover up using religion and we become works focused. I'm saying this to you because, so does my head block the sun for you now? Make the whole spell. <laughs> On the inside, it was singing Blinded by the Light. <laughs> because I have hair, it's not bouncing off my head and striking him. It's just, it's the veil of, of. So the results of shame is there's a cover up with religion. Have you met those people? They kind of cover up their shame using religion. I have, and then they become works focused. I've got to do this, I've got to do that, I've got to do this for Jesus. If I don't do this for Jesus, if I don't do that for Jesus, then he won't love me. That's because they're still living in shame. Now I want to help someone here, because what you have before you is the miraculous. This will not be waiting. The word of the Lord to you is that this is not to be waiting. You are to see the hand of the Lord for you as a congregation. What God will do, where you will worship, where you will meet going forward, where will be your home. Do not, do not allow your past issues of shame to move you into religious cover-up or works orientation that somehow I gotta work hard enough to prove that. I didn't pray enough to protect the church from being burnt down. My God. Just stop it. Was it Dick Cabot that said that? Stop it. This, the second area I see that this shame, shame produces lying, deception, and false pride. Don't nudge your neighbor. <laughs> but you can lean over and just say, uh, you don't want any of that. Lying, deception, false pride. Making promises we can't keep. When we're living in the tree of knowledge of good and evil and shame is, is at work there, we just make promises we, we're never going to be able to keep. But we make them in the moment in order to not feel bad about our conversation we're having with a person now. Do you hear what I'm saying? And then later we regret it and it's just a circle. Now we're getting self- um, I wrote in tongues, and so I'm just trying to get out of it. Yes, do not, you know shame is at work when you're getting self-gratification from the things you do. Instead, am I being led by Holy Spirit uh, whenever I'm driven by trying to do something in my own strength? Number five, the inability to come to a place of honesty with God because we believe we have no value. There are men and women in this community who need that shame broke off their life. There's a freedom they need. They really have an inability to come to the place of being honest with God. They don't believe they have value with God, but they won't even get honest with God and say, God, I, I have believed a lie from the enemy about myself. And number six, um, sin consciousness. Can I just ask you to think in terms of righteousness conscious instead of sin conscious? I think one of the biggest freedoms we the church need right now is a freedom from sin consciousness. I've heard that before, Pastor Dan. I'm glad. So let's just let's act in it. This week, what God is going to do as he builds night after night and, and the Hiltons are going to bless your socks off. Don't wear socks. They're going to bless your socks off. I mean, he's going to tear up. Did you hear me? Uh, pastors, Phil, our beautiful friends of ours, we love them. They're going to tear it up. I don't know the other folk, but I can tell you, if they chose them, they going to just, you going to be blessed. <laughs> but I feel really good about standing here with my wife and saying to you, look at the lines 
they have fallen to us in pleasant places. Yes. Yes. Don't look at what's missing. Look at the lines that have fallen into you in pleasant places. You have a goodly heritage. You have a high place to, have, to bring adoration to the Lord and to see what He'll do. So I'm going to ask you to consider that this freedom camp is a season of surrender. Can you say surrender? surrender. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through 6. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in, trust in and rely confidently on the Lord with all your heart. And do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways, know and acknowledge Him. And He will make your path straight, smooth, and removing obstacles that block your way. I like it there in the Amplified because I, I like the way it's indicating there is a path that's the Lord's path for us. So would you just say this word with me? I surrender all. I surrender all. There's something powerful. Freedom comes from surrender. There's a freedom that you and I need to have in our life, another level of freedom that comes from our surrender. It's a sweet surrender unto the Lord. And so this verse right here identifies for me, did you happen to do the living truth? Oh, that's beautiful, sister. Look at this, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Living Translation, which is the next translation from the Living Bible. I don't know if you knew that or not. And so this is an epic journey with God. Surrender is a journey. It's initial and ongoing surrender. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Now, so sometimes you surrender your will because the policeman has pulled you over. <laughs> and he wants to collect tithes and offerings for the local municipality. <laughs> Father, Son, Holy Spirit, I have Missouri plates. Protect me, Jesus, while here in Michigan. So, uh, and there's this amazing journey that God is inviting us on with Him. Isaiah 55 and 9 says that His ways and His thoughts are higher than our ways. So surrender is really a, a fruit of the spirit of sonship. Sonship is neither male nor female. It's position in Christ, seated with Christ. He celebrates both genders, two, male and female. He made them. He created them. Period. That's it. If you don't like it, your deliverance is coming shortly. I have 20 <laughs> gallons of oil I intend to pour on you and watch Jesus do wonderful things. I'm actually glad for that. So I think probably the issue of, of surrender not happening is it's a relationship issue. When, we, when we're not walking in right relationship with the Lord or with one another. So I'm going to ask you to consider that surrender becomes a problem for me when I'm walking in offendedness. When I walk in offendedness. Well, I wanted to help and I wanted to do that for pastor. I, want, I wanted to be the one that did this or that for the church and I... Be careful at this moment that you don't become offended in trying to do good. And if you find yourself offended, now you know that surrender is really the issue in that moment. So just say this with me. I surrender all. I surrender all. Uh, all to Jesus. I surrender. I surrender all. So I think I got maybe six ways we could stay unoffended. Wouldn't you like to hear them? I know I like them myself. Number one is take the lowest seat. Take the lowest seat. The reason why we take the lowest seat is because that's the place of honor. What do you mean the place of honor? The place of honor is not in the high place. The place of honor is in the low place. Even the word of God indicates to us, if you go and take the seat that's the lowest, then when the master of ceremonies or the leader of the house sees you, and they say, Oh no, I need you to come set with me. Then honor was honor was observed in my coming in and honor continued in their desire for you to maybe be in another place. But when I come in demanding or expecting that I'm going to get recognition and then I don't, I'm offended. 
And the root problem was surrender. My offense there was surrender. Can I have an amen? amen. Number two is always remain grateful. Always remain grateful. She didn't get these parts of my notes. I wrote some more down. And so always remain grateful is connected to the heart. That's the attitude of my heart. How can I keep offendedness off my life? Just walk in gratitude. Now listen. This, this is a disaster that you have. I mean, this is just... That's trauma. It's traumatic. It's loss every day. I know it happened on one day, but every time you drop by, you're like... Ugh. I mean, you, you just did amazing, beautiful things inside there to prepare for these moments. And then you're not able to enjoy it. Loss and grief are real. And the Lord knows that. He, and he honors that. He's, he's not oblivious to it, nor is he rejecting your grief. Right. There is good grief. There's processing grief. I just want to ask you, though, while you are yet observing, man, I miss that place. But God, you're faithful to us, and you're going to do yes. something amazing. Yes. When you connect gratitude to even what is a great sense of loss, you're shifting your heart out of being offended at God that he didn't protect your church. Because it wouldn't be hard for the devil to tell you the story of some other church that they put out their fire and they rescued and saved the whole church, but yours wasn't. And what would happen in that moment? We could get kind of ticked at God, could we not? Yeah. But I need to just surrender that pain now, surrender isn't denying. Surrender is saying, here you go, Jesus. Here it is. This is the pain. I'm hurting over this again today. And, and I know you love me. And I just thank you that you're going to show your goodness in the land of the living. The moment I connect my heart of gratitude. Okay, I think you got it. Number three, give others their freedom. Ladies and gentlemen, Stop demanding other people be nice to you or give you freedom, but we don't give it to them. Amen. That's that tree of knowledge of good and evil and tree of life thing we talked about this morning. So let's give people the freedom. Why don't we just say that to your neighbor and say, I'm going to give you freedom. Yeah. Now, you're not freeing them to sin. They already had that freedom. God gave them will, free will. It does have price tag at the end, but you you have will. You can do what you want. But does that work out well for you? I like my friend who would always say, how'd that work out for you? And how'd that work out for you? And how'd that work out for you? I'm like, stop it, okay? Because it didn't work out well at all. But I'm, I'm asking you to consider that you and I can give people their freedom. And the moment I do, I'm sowing to my own freedom. Number four, decisions that promote life in others. You and I are going to find out that my freedom is directly connected to a life of surrender that helps others with decisions that promotes life in them and in their, their, their journey. I know this sounds just so simple, but the truth is God never wanted it to be hard. He always wanted it to be real easy for us. That's why he put it in the Word, the Bible, the book. Gave it to us so we could literally read it again and again and again. And every time you read it, have a fresh, yeah, a fresh breath of God on it. Yes. For us to see what he's saying in this moment. Trusting God to bring justice when an offense comes is the grace component, number five. So when you've been done wrong, and you have... Listen, I'm so glad I learned how to drive in Michigan because I needed that before I went to Missouri. <laughs> this non-Catholic has made the sign of the cross very many times. Are you hearing me? Because I was getting a different sign from people down where I'm living. And they were raising their hands, but not to Jesus. They were sending a message to me. You know what message they're talking, I'm talking about. So... Um, read between the lines, the pastor said, okay, so you know what I'm saying. And I would like, what the devil are you? 
You cut me off. But listen, trust that God will bring justice when an offense comes into your life. I can put the person, I can surrender the need for them to get squared out by my fist and put them over on the Lord's hook for him to deal with. So I have a badge. That too. And you know, there have been a number of times when I had to practice this trusting God to bring justice when I'm offended at somebody's literal trying to trying to kill me and their driving skills. And there have been several times I want to pull my badge out and go. Just to make them wet themselves a little. That's what I was thinking. Just, just a little piddle in your britches and, and then you drive on. And, yeah, I just thought, me. But that's not what the word's saying here. Trusting God to bring justice. Is there any man here who can identify with me that when someone is just about risk your family's life because someone is texting and driving? I'm just asking you to consider that grace might be the component. Number six there, though, was to dedicate time to the Lord. And that's the direct connection. My surrender is really measured by my time I spend with Him. So then, my surrender moves me into the ability to forgive. Bear with me for a minute. In Ephesians 1, chapter 1, verse 7, In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. So it's because of Him I am forgiven. And this is the question Pastor Cindy and I pose to people so often. Jesus, who died for your sins against Him, also died for His sins against you. What part of that don't we reconcile? And that happens so often. Yes. So in my surrender component, I now moved into the activation. If for me to walk in freedom and for me to have freedom in my life, for my children to have freedom, my family, my neighbors to have freedom, that forgiveness component comes with not only did Jesus die for my sins against him, but he died for your sins against me. Well, I don't want to hear that he died for your sins against me. I want to hear that there is the ability to call fire down from heaven and bring forth a brand new burnt offering that would be a sweet smelling savor to my nostrils. I mean, what I'm saying. But you know, that's our issue. Now, if you go, if, if from 1 to 100, if you've only had 1% inkling towards that, that's enough for you to know you really need to have a fresh and new forgiveness. You don't have to be at 51% to be in the danger zone, okay? It really is this, that forgiveness is the one thing, unforgiveness, excuse me, is the one thing that will keep you out of heaven. Did you know sin will not keep you out of heaven? I'm not going to preach that message today. a sucker punch for somebody, but it's not your sin that keeps you out of heaven, it's unforgiveness. Which is a sin, but it's not your sin that's keeping you out of heaven. Jesus died for my sin and he died for your sin against me. And when people choose to say, I believe in Jesus, but I can't forgive this person for what they did to me, that's the person that the Bible says, but Lord, Lord, I cast out devils in your name. I spoke with new tongues. I raised the dead. So the power of the name of Jesus is so powerful that at that name, demons leave, eyes open, deaf hear, lame walk, the dead are raised, and the person using the name still go to hell with the bridges on. Because unforgiveness is that component that the person didn't deal with. They thought that by virtue of their activity of the kingdom, they had earned their place. Someone just say, well, Pastor Will will fix everything you say, Pastor Dan, when you're gone. <laughs> Reasons why we struggle to forgive. We have the wrong idea of forgiveness. I think that's the first reason. We have the wrong idea. Forgiveness is not minimizing the offense. If someone has injured you or wounded you, don't minimize that. Don't, well, it's okay. 
I'm really not worth that much anyway. That's a wrong. Don't minimize that. If you've been hurt or wounded, if there's been something that's happened, unforgiveness is there, don't minimize it. Let's deal with it. Let's forgive. Yes. How? Well, I'm going to have to acknowledge that really did wound me. I am made in the image of God, and now I have some choices to make. I'm going to choose to forgive this person, and I'm going to put them over in the Lord's hands, or on his shelf, or on his desk, or on his coat hook, where the, the Lord can deal with them, and I'm going to choose to walk in forgiveness towards them. Don't minimize the offense. Forgiveness is not forgetting what happened. I said it earlier, I want to remind you, forgiveness is not a forgetting what happened. You've not forgiven somebody because you try to forget what they did. You forgive them because you confess with your mouth, not only with relationship with Jesus Christ, but relationship within your fellow man. Hence the cross that's out there tonight. It has two major beams. It is the vertical, which is my relationship with God, and I need forgiveness. So God provided it through His Son, Jesus Christ. And then Jesus' arms that are reached out, the lateral relationships with mankind with each other. So forgiveness is not reconciliation. Would you look at Romans 12 and 18? Did I give you that one, sister? I don't know if I wrote it in later. Did I give it to you or didn't? Okay. Romans 12 and 18. Do you mind if we just take a minute, open your Bible? Because I added some things after a while. Romans 12 and 18. Do all that you can do to live in peace with everyone, the new living says. Do all that you can do to live in peace with everyone. If possible, the Amplified says, as far as it depends on you, live in peace with everyone. Forgiveness is not reconciliation. I can forgive a person that I'm not necessarily reconciled to. Some people I should not be reconciled to. What do you mean? I mean that there are some people who uh, have not yet stopped hurting individuals. If your abuser is still abusing, I cannot seek reconciliation with them, but I can have forgiveness. I can forgive them. I can forgive the person who has wounded me or wounded my family member. I can forgive them and not have reconciliation with them. So how can it, how is this passage of scripture important? If possible, as far as it depends with you or on you, live at peace with everyone. It means that I can choose to have a peace concerning them. This is the peace. Jesus, on this one, they are absolutely yours. And in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I sever the tie, the soul tie, the connection, the woundedness. I sever it by the word of the living God. For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing, dividing asunder, soul and spirit, joint and moral, discerning the thoughts and intents of the heart. Sever even now, O Lord. Lord, I give them to you, and you heal them, and you do in them what you would like to do. But I sever this day my connection to them. I bless them with your loving kindnesses and tender mercies. That's a hard one, but it's essential. When you start to bless the person who has wounded you with loving kindnesses and tender mercies, what you're really saying is you don't want to go to hell. No, no, Pastor Dan, I want them to go to hell. Exactly. But you don't want to go to hell. So when I start to bless them with loving kindnesses and tender mercies, what I'm really saying is, God, you be God and only you can be God in their life and for them and with them in this moment. And I set them free. So forgiveness can be accomplished without reconciliation. Sometimes forgiveness and reconciliation happens. In fact, it happens far more often in the relationships with brothers and sisters in Christ where there has not been a sin against them at such a level where there's a deep wounding. Like a misunderstanding. Right? Let me ask you this. Reconciliation is, let me say this to you instead. Reconciliation is a two-way street. It happens when we see repentance, restitution, and the rebuilding of trust on their part. 
So part of my reconciliation with a person is when they've repented as well, and when they have brought restitution to what they've done, and when they have rebuilt the trust, then the option or possibility for reconciliation is now maybe on the table. But unsafe people, sometimes the wounded victim is just not gonna be able to determine that a reconciliation is possible. You're gonna need someone else like the popo or the judge, I wish I could get a little help right here from an amen corner somewhere. But you know and I know that there are women who have been abused and it has been so ingrained in them that they are worthless that when they seek for rest, reconciliation with the abuser, they think, well, he's changed. Or that is my husband. That's a person who's not yet healed. And so they're going to need healing and they can forgive Jack Donkey without having reconciliation in that moment. I think that was a King James word and we'll just stick with it, all right? Are you with me? Can we say King James? It has afforded me several fun moments with words. So um, we don't, sometimes we don't, we struggle with uh, unforgiveness because we don't think it's fair that that happened to me. It wasn't fair. You know, God is still the God of unfairness. Hey, how fair was it that only Noah, his wife, his sons, and their wives got on the ark. In this woke moment we're in, they would have been calling the government to deal with Noah for not having rescued those individuals. And if you're struggling with even the words I'm saying, that will show you how far away from an understanding that God was never the God of fairness but he's always been the God of justness. He's Thank jealous. In other words, God will always give opportunity for salvation, and he did. Noah preached for over a hundred years, but they rejected. Can I have an amen? So God doesn't, he doesn't use fairness. And Jesus wasn't fair in that moment when Peter was being asked, and the, and the disciples were being so, you know, how often should I forgive? And Peter thought he was, you know, full of just amazingness. And he said, seven times, Master. That's how many times it was. Seven times. And, and what did Jesus do? Seven times. Peter was pretty deflated in that moment right there, was he? Not in that moment where he's like, well, Jesus, throw me under the bus here. I thought I was being really good with the thought, but... Here's the deal. Jesus was indicating sometimes forgiveness is not about God being unfair. Sometimes it's about me being unfair to not forgive the situation again and again and again. 490 times really means throughout the course of the day, just keep declaring, I forgive. I release them in Jesus' name and I bless them until forgiveness is accomplished. So we don't think... Uh, we can do it is probably another struggle that I just want to ask you. One of your freedoms, if you're looking for freedom from pornography, if you're looking for freedom from drugs or alcohol or lying or gambling or whatever that we, we have kind of lumped into that group, then, or maybe you're looking for freedom some, from some other things, uh, I just want to say to you is that this whole issue with unforgiveness is root to all of those issues. Sometimes we want to we want to pick on a particular fault, sin, uh, behavior of flesh, and pick on that one to be the worst. When the truth is, God was so concerned about the unforgiveness issue for us to have freedom, we have to forgive. And that's why, as Pastor Cindy was speaking to us and reminding us, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit will show you, change you if you invite him to and fill you with revelation knowledge to know what is next. So forgiveness um, is not accomplished in my own strength. Um, there are times when a person just does something real simple and I can just say, I forgive you. But I really have learned that I, I, I choose to do so always in the name of Jesus. Because if I'm leaning in my own strength on a weak day, I'm going to let it harbor in my heart. But if I always practice forgiving a person in the name of Jesus, just in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I just set them free. That highest authority. Just releasing that person. Father, I bless them. I bless them right now and I release them. 
because there are injuries that happen in life that you have not the capability of forgiving. Who can truly forgive in the words of Pastor Cindy? Let God in you doing the forgiving. Who can really forgive? Christ in you does the forgiving with you making a choice. Did you hear me? My choice, my will, I choose. I just looked at uh, the time zone for when the skeeters start to come in, so I'll move right along here, okay? I just want you to know. Uh, so remember what we said earlier, choices lead, feelings follow. Choices lead, feelings follow. I, I, I want to live my life knowing the Word of God and make choices concerning that. I do get a sense sometimes, I will sense that the Lord is moving or doing something. But I can tell you, my feelings, I, I can have a feeling, a deep sense and feeling of just hurt for somebody. But I've not necessarily made a choice to minister life, health, and wholeness to them. I can identify with feelings towards a situation. But God's word has given me the ability to act by choice in a situation with the scriptural parameters that bring life. And then when we say feelings follow, we're not saying we are denying feelings. I'm not asking you to deny your feelings. I'm asking you to understand that joy always seems to just follow along when I'm making life choices. Life choices to forgive. So let me ask you to um, say this to the person as you say, I choose to forgive. Will you forgive me? That was a nice little practice run right there. So um, the next time somebody cuts you off, uh, they don't do that up here though in the north, do they? <laughs> Wait a minute, I forgot them old fudgies. Yes. Now what? What'd you say? Flatlanders? <laughs> Let's see. What is the? We're at 1,396 feet where I'm standing right here. My my watch tells me where where I'm standing. In, in Missouri, it's 1,300 and like, you know, 23 or something. So I just want to know, I'm glad to say that although it's the heartland of America, we're at about the same elevation. Praise God for the all elevation flows. So <laughs> choosing to forgive, forgiveness in action. I'm going to ask you to write down these three things, and I think they might help you. Ready? We're going to pray for people who have offended us on purpose. Yes. We're going to pray for people who have offended us on purpose. We're going to practice forgiveness. Do the known ones. Just do the known ones. I don't know. Maybe there's a story help you. One of, the, one of the most difficult times in my life was when somebody acted in such a way that it was jeopardizing our church from the outside. It was such a jeopardizing component. It caused me for months to live in something I had no idea I would ever experience, and that was just anxiety. <coughs> Couldn't sleep at night. It wasn't until the Lord gave me a word that I could move forward with life, but it would be years later when I realized that just because I got a word from God to know how to move forward, they, they did not succeed in their efforts. We made, we found God showed us a path forward. We did not have to kill anybody. And in Missouri, that's not hard to do because they have mines there. And you can very, at least that's what they tell me. Am I right, Debbie? That's what they tell me. So anyway, not that we've done that. Overhead, viaduct, pylons. So I just, I'm, I'm thinking that Michigan and Missouri, they both start with an M. This yeah. is interesting, isn't it? Okay, yeah. so, um, but after, after the rescue and my heart found wholeness from the anxiety and I was finding peace and looking forward, anytime the name of that person was brought up, yeah. it just rose up in the back. And then I would realize I can't do that. So I would confess forgiveness after a couple of days of deep conviction. <laughs> and 
it, it was literally years before when the name was spoken that I would just go, and it's doing good today. Praise God. Yes. You might not, I'm not giving you any details because the tree of knowledge of good and evil is not a tree I want to offer you tonight. But from the tree of life, I want to tell you that what was so painful and then so repulsive that if his name was mentioned, I'm so glad rapture didn't happen before this all got squared away because I really don't know if my mother would have let me into heaven <laughs> for not having dealt with that issue. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The mama who fasted 40 days to get the wrong girl out of my life so that the right girl would come into my life. When your mama won't eat and she drink water and fast for 40 days so that you will not marry the wrong person. You know mama got some influence with heaven. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And then when Mike was dating the wrong girl, she had to fast another 40 days for him. And Mike needed 40 days of fasting, that's for sure. But he got the right one. And then when Joe was dating the wrong one, she said to Mike and me, now you're going to split 40 days each. You do 20, you do 20. I covered both of you. 80 days if you got good women, you're going to take care of Joe. Did she not? Had I not dealt with my unforgiveness. How do you know it's unforgiveness? Because when the name was mentioned, I, I, all of the pain had turned from pain to now bitterness. Yeah. So I'm going to ask that you pray for people who've offended you. Luke 6, 27 through 28 talks to us about that. Bless the people who've offended you. I had to start practicing the blessing. And I, I can tell you, I did it by faith. Pastor Sonny would say, no, I'm honey. <laughs> when you're married to a person who you both are walking in this, this, you know, this training and teaching, and you're trying to deal with, you know, how to just help others through life, and we help one another. And so she just lead me through that. Now, honey, can you just say this? Uh, <laughs> Lord, bless them with loving kindnesses and tender mercies. Can we just start with that? Can we get that much out of your mouth? And just, just, you know. Or then sometimes when she would just kind of throw me a look, guys, you know the look they give you? It's when, they, when you see that look and the eyebrows go into that particular um, placement, you know you're about to get a word you wish she wouldn't give you, but you know you need. Are you? Okay, so none of you guys know what I'm talking about. If you're from Michigan. She's from Michigan. I'm just saying, when that word would come out of her mouth, it was like, and thank God she knew how to place that word at the right moment. And thank you for never placing those words at moments that were not, that would have been nothing more than further aggravation. Right. Thank you for having love and, and heart for me, but not to leave me in the struggle of that until I could say the name and not feel the pain or the bitterness or the, hmm, what can I do to cause that to him? The preacher? Yeah. Third one do good to people who have offended us. Now this is going to require us to live in the tree of life in order for us to accomplish this, but you can do good to those who offended you. So forgiving ourselves, I'm going to ask us, uh, we're already moving into our altar service because we're going to practice forgiving ourselves. And I'm going to ask you to do something that you really need to do, and that is you're going to get, you leave here, you'll be getting around in the morning when you're getting ready to go to work or wherever you're going, and you're going to look in the mirror. And I'm going to ask you to look into the mirror, look into those eyes, and invite Holy Spirit to come in and search you and change you and heal you. Because He's going to reveal to you the one thing now that's standing in the way of your now breakthrough. Yes. And yes. your breakthrough could bring breakthrough to the rest of the family. Thank you, Lord. When Norma O'Neill got saved, it started a domino effect. Her mama, my mama, my Uncle Dick, my Uncle Dwayne. Did that whole, I mean, an alcoholic dad, a broken family. You know, you know the story. 
And then finally Grandpa coming to Jesus. And from that first salvation with Norma Jean Thompson O'Neill, from that first salvation there are many preachers and ministers and lovers of Jesus serving God today. Because one person had an encounter with Jesus and the process began. You could be the breakthrough, not just for you, but for someone else. So we're going to confront our past. Um, and what happens is we like to bury it, but you can't bury it. It'll stink and come to the surface. I have another quick story. Don't move to North Carolina. If you move to North Carolina, you can bury your dead in your backyard. And you have to have them down at least 18 inches. You know a heavy rain in Michigan. Did you hear what I just said? I didn't make that up. If you want to, you can have the family cemetery in your backyard. And then when you sell the property, it would be good if you told the people who bought the house, but they don't always. But oh, by the way, granny and grandpa and, and auntie and uncle and the cousin that we're not quite sure if he was a brother or a cousin, he's buried out there too. Sometimes we try to bury things, um, but they just, you know, the devil is a critter. He comes digging at the smell of death. And if you try to bury your unforgiveness, your, your own unforgiveness or someone else's, it's only going to stink. We beat ourselves up. I'm going to ask you to say this to the person next to you. Please leave the land of regret. So let's just practice that. Father God, we ask right now that in this freedom camp and these days that we're in, that you will help us to break the power of unforgiveness. Lord, we thought we needed you to deal with our regrets. We, we thought that was it, but regret was a fruit of something deeper, unforgiveness. We, we thought that this burying all of our troubles was, a, was our problem, but it's just a fruit of unforgiveness. So we're confessing today, Lord, that we're going to deal with our unforgiveness. Yes. And Lord, I'm going to stop blaming everybody else for my issues. I'm going to say, Jesus, you are yet Lord. You yet died for it. I won't blame others. Father, Adam blamed Eve. How idiotic. Gift of God. And he blamed Eve. Lord, help me not to return to my Adamic nature and blame somebody close to me for where I've not dealt with my own unforgiveness. Lord, help us to stop trying to earn forgiveness. Why don't we just pray this out loud? We're going to just do a group prayer right here. Father God, Father God help, me help me to stop trying to earn forgiveness. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your, I I receive your life, I receive your life today. today. The tree of life. The tree I, surrender. I surrender. And I choose to forgive. I, choose to forgive. I don't need to earn it. Need you, earn paid it. you paid for it. Your word says you paid for it. I receive your forgiveness by faith and not by my words. Yes, right there. Someone needs to just let that one soak in. I receive your forgiveness by faith and not by words. Thank you. Let's just pray this word. Father, I open my heart to you. Father God, defeat every lie with the spirit of truth in my life. I invite you, spirit of truth, into my life, into my heart, into my soul, into every relationship. And the spirit of truth is speaking truth. And the lie of the enemy I will not follow. I break the power right now of every lie that these people 
or any of our family members have heard or seen, when we recognize it, we're breaking the power of the lie. Yes. Break the power of the lie. You spirit of deception. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Father, you spoke a word to us today. You spoke a word to us today. You told us that when the intercessor was praying, they prayed, it would just be easier for you, Satan, to leave town now before the word of God gets a hold of you. Father, thank you for what you're doing to setting the captive free. Thank you, Lord. So in these last thoughts, can I say this? Um, confession is your, is, is your gift. It's your right to confess. You can confess. And you need, to, you need to qualify who you confess to. You need to qualify who you confess to. Um, when, sometimes when I just have a, a frailty and I need to deal with that, I need to, I need to qualify the person. When I say qualify, I mean um, there are those who are spiritual, those who are elders, those who are your brother, your sister, and the Lord who know you, and you go to them and say, I've really been struggling with this or that issue, and we do need to be able to do that. But confession is in, it's permission for Holy Spirit then to bring healing and for freedom to come. And sometimes my biggest need for freedom comes from the smallest area or issue of a confession, a repentance, a casting off, and then a bless. Those four words I want to say to you. Confess, repent, cast off, bless. Now, I believe that when the confession is done, Father, I thank you that you have forgiven me my sin. The repentance is, I know that this was wrong and I, I own up to it, but I'm not going to walk in that way again. Yes. And then the casting off to put off whatever it is that's been a practiced way of thinking or practiced way of doing, and then to begin to bless the Lord. First, bless the Lord. Bless him for what he has done and what he's doing in your life in that moment and watch what he will do and he will cause freedom to reign. Look at this confession with me, if you would. Um, thank you again. I sent this to her this afternoon as an add-on for me, and I'm just grateful. Let freedom reign. So, I do not repay evil for evil. Let's just say it all together. Ready? I do not repay evil for evil. I am careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on me, I will live at peace with everyone. I will not take revenge, but leave room for God's wrath. Because God has promised He will handle it. Order, order. Do you believe that He will handle it? Well, you, you've already found the door of freedom. Because if you believe He'll handle it, then you're already on your way to freedom. It's the person who doesn't believe God would ever bring justice for them. And those are individuals we want to continue to help, and we will. And you're going to help them in this community. They're going to be free. So go on with me. On the contrary, if my enemy is hungry, I will feed him. Ah, if he is thirsty, I will give him something to drink. I will not be overcome by evil, but I will overcome evil with good. Amen. That confession that they'll, she'll make available to you at some point. That, that confession right there is my heart connecting with what I know God wants to do. So here's our prayer before I just uh, turn it back to Pastor. And then what I will do is if you want if you want them to have a moment of prayer time with us, I'm willing to do that. I believe the Lord will bring some breakthrough to some people. But um, tonight I'm, I'm, not, I'm not in that prophetic flow. I am believing that God will release healing. It can happen tonight. It can happen tomorrow night. But that prayer... This is the prayer of forgiveness. So let's pray this as me asking the Lord to forgive you, forgive me. Ready? Lord, instead of loving, I have resented certain people. I have unforgiveness in my heart. Forgive my sin of holding on to the offense. I ask you, Lord, to give me the power to forgive those who have hurt me. I release them to you now 
Give me the strength to pray for them, bless them, and want the best for them. Thank you for breaking these chains off my life. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Now, we're not going to underestimate that prayer we just prayed because it was with words that created the universe. It's with words we created the mess in our own universe. And it's with words that we set back in order my spirit, soul, Amen. and body to walk in freedom. Amen. It's a layer. Look at your neighbor and say, prepare for onion soup. <laughs> Do you like onion soup? No. Yeah. You don't? You don't like French onion soup? Sorry. I want your portion. Who likes French onion soup on the other two? Okay. Who likes it with that bread on top and then the... Yes. That's, that's for that's for there's a good one somewhere we'll find it in town okay so um listen the lord peels you like an onion he cries right along with you while you're getting healing your freedom is not going to happen with a big shazam your freedom is coming in the name of jesus it is immediate but he will continue to peel the onion why because he's not going to chop you up into fine little bits and pieces. He wants you he wants you to live. And the other day we bought some onions, sweet onions from the farmer's market, and I cut that and peeled it back. I took a bite of it. Oh, sweet Lord Jesus, all I ate was some of Mama Wilson's beans to eat with that onion. God loves to peel things back layer by layer. He'll cry when he does. He'll cry with you, but you will be healed and you will find wholeness. And it all began with this prayer tonight. Stand to your feet with us. Pastor, it's time for us. We've been praying for freedom. And it starts in the house of God. It starts there. And um, the words that have been spoken tonight are life-giving when we put them into practice. Yes. And so we want to make sure that we have an opportunity to do that. Go from this place tonight and put into practice the things you've heard. Now here's the thing. If you need prayer before you leave, you're welcome to come for prayer. Pastor Dan is sending me a blood and happy to pray with you. And uh, you know, so that if you need that or, or feel like that's something further that you would like, I want to give you that opportunity. But we want to bless each and every one of you before you go. Those of you who are leaving earlier and you're not staying for that prayer, just please be reminded that there are people up here that are being prayed with and uh, honor that, okay? Could you raise your hands with me? Where are you raising your hands? I have a word. I feel like the Holy Spirit has just been saying, what were you expecting? What were you expecting from freedom came? Now sometimes our expectations, especially those of us who are from the Pentecostal background, you know, we expected we were going to come in here and somebody was going to cast a demon out of us and it was going to be done right now. We were expecting that we were going to come in here and we were going to rejoice with the worship team and we were going to hear a powerful word and then we were going to just be set free. It was going to be freedom that we needed. And then we come in here and somebody says, you got to forgive. <laughs> yes, Lord. Well, that's not what I came here for. I came here so you would cast the demons out of my kids. I am challenging you to be mature enough to adjust your expectation and receive what God has served you instead of what you expected. Thank you, Lord. And I bless you in that maturity. Oh, hallelujah. I bless you in yes. that maturity. I bless you that right now your heart is softening and you are saying, yes, Lord, this is what I needed even though I didn't know it. 
and I will receive it with thanksgiving, yes, and Lord. I will change by the power of your word. Let it be. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Pastor. Freedom is an inside job. Just is. It's an inside job. Lord, I thank you for your goodness and grace. Thank you for each one that's here. I thank you, Lord, for what you've spoken to us. And I'm thankful, Lord, for the work that's being done even now in our hearts. And Lord, I pray that as freedom comes in our lives, we'll also see it manifested in the lives of those around us. And just like uh, uh, one woman come to Christ and then a whole family comes to Christ. Or one man comes to Christ and a whole family comes to Christ. I pray, Lord, that you'll work the work in us and then we will see it manifested not only in our lives, but in the lives of those that are dear to us. We thank you for this and we pray for blessings upon your people today. In Jesus' name, amen.